I'm Nate Nix. I'm a 23-year-old rapper uh, from Grove Hall, Boston, Dorchester, Roxbury, kind of adjacent area. I used to live off of Faston Street, so there was like a lot of community efforts that were going on um, up and down the street around Blue Hill. Um, there was also a lot of like violence and stuff like that going on, so it was really just about like navigating, you know, the different kind of like sides of the streets, making sure you knew where you were at, making sure you like, you know, knew where your family was at any given time because anything could pop off. But you know, for the most part, it was pretty calm. It was pretty um, straightforward. We were able to maneuver, and I feel like it was it was really um, yeah, it was just helpful for like my upbringing. You know what I mean? I always hold like a lot of the experiences that I had growing up. It's always something that I think comes together through my art. I just wanted to bring to life like the stories of those that I that are no longer with us. I lost a lot of friends growing up to a lot of the violence that I mentioned before. So. You know, every day when I'm like taking the stage and when I'm making these records, it's really just about honoring their legacy as well through my own. You know? Inspiration, like musically, I think, or just like artistically in general, I'm always inspired by the Harlem Renaissance. I think that era was something that we're seeing a lot of now in Boston, where there's a lot of funding being put towards like our communities to build like these artistic, you know, projects and you know, conglomerates almost for the sake of like the art and being able to tell our story. And the Harlem Renaissance was largely funded by like white corporations and white like private donors. And I think I'm seeing a lot of that like in Boston now, you know what I mean, with like a lot of the foundations and grant services that are going around. So it's really dope to see. Um, I think like in contrast to what was going on then, like we have a lot more, um, you know what I mean, like music artists. So I feel like this is gonna be a really interesting time in the next like couple of years just to see how we grow and develop. But I think also artistic inspiration for sure. Um, like Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, like that's definitely um, someone that I draw a lot of inspiration from because when I was growing up, like, even, like ever since I was, I think, like 11 or 12 years old, like that's like been my favorite artist, um, you know what I mean, which is weird. Like I feel like it's just, it's, it's cool to see it's where he is now versus where he was then. It just gives a lot of uh, hope and inspiration to people like me who just like, you know, want to create what they want to create without like boundaries or limits. So it's really dope. First moment for real, um, probably my first performance as a rapper um, with my boy Frankie. Um, the first time I ever like performed in front of a crowd was at like this open mic like showcase event. It was like a competition. Basically, it was like yo, whoever has the best bars, you win. And we were like, we're gonna enter this competition. We're gonna win. We didn't win. We lost. It was bad. But um, it really like showed me that I had a lot of like room to grow, and that you know because even beforehand, like I was like rehearsing and like practicing, it still wasn't like the best that I could do. Um, and I felt like past that, I was like, I'm just gonna keep going up from here. And to me, like what being a rapper and being like an artist in general is all about is like knowing where you are right now and working and striving to become better every time. You know what I mean? Like next time I took the stage was like 10 times better than the last time and hopefully it continues to grow like that. Um, so I think that was really the moment for me. Like losing in that competition and seeing where I'm at now is like, yeah. I'm I don't listen to like the beat when I like am writing um, and I usually just write verses like without instrumentals or instrumentation in mind because I want the verse not to be dictated by like how the beat sounds or like a BPM in mind or anything. Um, I really like to like write, it's like poetry so I'm like writing first and crafting a verse. I write down like topics first, what I want to talk about because I'm a very like organized thinker like I'm used to writing prose a lot so I like write it like almost like an outline you know what I mean? I'm like this is what my thesis is going to look like you know, et cetera, et cetera. But like for verses, I'm like, this is how I want to open. These are things that I might want to mention. And then I write down words that rhyme, um, like as many rhyming words as I can based on those topics that I put. So I'm like, now it's just about filling in the blanks and figure out how I can get from point A to point B, from point B to point C, and so on and so forth. Hooks are a little different. I draw like, when it comes to like courses, I like to hear the instrumental before I even start crafting them. But for verses, yeah, that's how I write verses. Me, I try to always go back to like my roots in music, which has been, you know, like African drumming and also, um, you know, like a lot of like metal music, like punk rock, I guess, and pop punk. Like those are like the genres of music that I started listening to like the most when I was like younger and where I really found myself like solidifying in. I'm always like very impressed by like the structure of those songs um, and I like the way that they're able to like draw like inspiration from like their idols and like their influences but always like turn unique spins on it. Me, like whenever I feel like, oh, this verse isn't fire enough or like this like hook isn't really doing it for me, like, I go back to those influences and be like, how did they do this? Or like, how, what was their structure like that I can like, you know, you know, implement into my own work and it helps a lot. Yeah, COVID was like, um, I think it hit at a time, or like it became like 
the lockdown, I guess, like in the quarantine period for like the US like hit at a time where I really needed to like take a break from, you know, like music. Um, mostly because like I wanted to really focus on like organizing work and I feel like um, when I wasn't able to like perform anymore and I wasn't able to go to like recording studios, it really like allowed me to take a, like a moment of like repeat for music. Um, and my last project was really inspired by like the work that I was doing and the people that I was doing it with. So I feel like it definitely impacted my career in like maybe like a positive way just because it allowed me to take that break. And then from there I was able to start like, you know, re -energ I was almost like re-energized creatively and it allowed me to like start looking at things in a different way, creating different types of music, different sounds and playing around with them in a way that I felt like, you know, I could really master these things. So I think it was helpful. It does kind of pain me to say it. I'm not really a huge fan of the way that the city's response to COVID was, but I think on the artistic side, they really did a, a they played a really good um, role, an active role in making sure that artists um, main, like they were able to maintain like a lot of artists like funding during this time, whether it was like, you know, like, you know, club passing, being able to like give out their Guana Foundation grant still, or like the Boston Foundation with their Lab Arts Boston grant, like stuff like that. And like the city, obviously they had like their relief fund for artists. It was really dope to see like that artistic community in the city um, really come together and like push these funds forward. I was able to be a recipient of a lot of those grants. So it was, it was really dope to see um, how that was able to change. All right, y'all, thank you for watching my episode of Meet the Creators. I dropped the album called Human Go. Um, I definitely want folks to listen to that. Being able to tell this story in the way that I did, I feel like is very true to me and true to the way that I look at the world. So I definitely want to plug that always. Human Guile is out now on all streaming platforms. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. This has been a really dope opportunity for me. And if you want to follow me on social media or listen to my project, you can find me at N-I-C-S-N-A-T-I-O-N. That's Nick's Nation on Instagram and Twitter. On there will be a link to all my music, which you can also find under the, under the name Nate Nicks on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, if you want to purchase it, everything. Shout out to y'all.